Hello and welcome to this afternoon's podcast. This is the first in the many of Bitcoin noon podcasts delivered to you every day, BST, 12 o'clock lunchtime. So we're going to jump straight into it today. What we're going to discuss today is the total cryptocurrency market cap, Bitcoin's dominance expression as a percentage of that. Then we'll be looking at Bitcoin's market capitalization specifically. Then we'll look at the index and then we'll weigh all these things up on the Libra scale of importance and we'll see what the probabilities and statistics are alluding to. So without further ado, I'm going to jump straight on into it. Thank you for joining today and I hope you get something out of it. So looking at the total cryptocurrency market cap, we can see that the total valuation of the whole ecosystem is approximately $1.03 trillion. Since midnight, we've dropped $7 billion on average. So just something to be aware of, just setting the theme here. We've got 89% sell pressure engulfing the total cryptocurrency market cap. We are also held underneath the 21 day look back period, which is the red line that you see on your chart here. And we are also underneath the major sell side imbalance buy side inefficiency that was delivered to us on August. August was the worst month this year. Thus, you know, the price action delivery is governed to the downside. If we were to reclaim the imbalance, meaning if we were to go above the consequent encouragement, which means above the middle ground, that would be good and constructive for continuation to the upside back towards the July high, which is the current yearly high on the whole ecosystem, particularly the, um, the total cryptocurrency market cap. So let's leave it there. Um, is there anything else worth mentioning on topic? Um, I don't think there is. Um, not for this anyway. So let's segue into the Bitcoin dominance as an expression. So if the total cryptocurrency market cap is 1.03, that means that Bitcoin's dominance is 51% of that total figure. So that would give a Bitcoin, well, Bitcoin as an asset class, a market capitalization of approximately 529 billion. But let's discuss the dominance as a percentage and then we'll go into the actual figure itself and then we'll dissect that. So looking at the Bitcoin dominance, we can see that, let's pull up a weekly. We're gonna see that this is on the resistance right here, which is the 200 day look back period. We also see the same selling pressure engulfing the market with four days and 15 hours until the weekly expires on Bitcoin dominance. And right now, let's give it its dues, right? It's been bullish ever since September, 2022, right? The North remembers we were approximately 39% in dominance and now we're 51% in dominance. So typically, this would be very indicative of the altcoins losing control, losing energy, losing money, and that money and energy would be flowing into Bitcoin. Thus, the Bitcoin dominance is increasing and all the other dominance on the adolescent coins is decreasing because it's inferior, right? Now, case in point, let me just give you a, a little case study here. If we look at Ethereum's market cap, Ethereum is seen to be Bitcoin's silver. If Bitcoin's gold, Ethereum is the silver. Now, Ethereum's dominance is epoxy 18%. You know, let's pull this up here. This is Ethereum's dominance. It's 18%, right? And Ethereum is the second largest crypto on planet Earth. That's, you know, not a stable coin. I do believe it's Bitcoin, Ethereum, then the USDT stable coin. So there you go. But the idea is very simple, right? Bitcoin's got 51% control of the whole ecosystem and Ethereum has only got 18% control of the whole ecosystem. So just giving you a little case study there. Now let's move on to Bitcoin's market capitalization. So specifically, let's go into how much is Bitcoin worth in isolation. We know the total market cap of crypto is worth 1.03. So Bitcoin's market cap would be 529 billion approximately. And that's 51% dominance of the total market cap. Now, the idea here then, let's have a look at volume, trend and momentum to form a thesis. What we see here is 84% sell pressure. We see RSI falling and MACD falling in tandem underneath 544 billion and notably 539 billion for MACD. So RSI invalidation, 544 billion. MACD invalidation, 539 billion. If Bitcoin closes back above any of those inflections, the momentum will then start to pick up back to the upside and start to incline posture as opposed to decline posture, which it is currently right now. 
So very simple, very, very simple. Now, since midnight, Bitcoin's dropped approximately $5.21 billion since midnight. Um, and it doesn't even register as 1%. It's approximately 0.97% of a drop, but still it accrues to 5.20 billion on average. So, you know, we're dealing with big numbers here. So let's leave it there. Um, is there anything else I want to mention on topic? Um, let's pull up the Bitcoin daily real quick. Um, how are we doing for time here? Five minutes, really good. We're speeding through this. So this is something I really want to bring to your attention because we've been looking at this chart consistently on this podcast for what's, what feels like weeks, right? Um, this is the 21st episode of what I call the morning market meeting, now the Bitcoin noon podcast. So ultimately, we've been banging this narrative and saying that, look, the volume has been down for a long time. The trend has been down ever since July, which is the previous quarterly high and the current yearly high. So what we see here is a diagonal resistance white line predicate. So I've just marked it off so you guys can clearly see the contrast against the black background. Um, as long as we've got candles underneath, that would be bearish, meaning price action would continue to the downside. However, if we start seeing price action close above the diagonal resistance, that would be a change in behavior, a change of character, and thus my behavior would change, right? Um, when the data changes, we should change. You know, as the wind changes, you should set your sail. Or when the tide goes out, you want to, you know, you want to change with the tide. Because guess what, guys and dolls? When the tide shifts, you will see who is swimming naked. You will see when the tide shifts, who is swimming naked. Meaning, just don't be that person that's swimming naked, right? You want to be prepared and go with the flow. Um, and that's the general idea. So cool. Is there anything else worth mentioning on topic in regards to this? Of course there is. So Bitcoin is now underneath not only its 200 day simple moving average. I'm going to zoom in on this so you guys can really see. We are also underneath the 55 day moving average and we're also underneath the 21 day. Now there's still 14 hours and 29 minutes until daily expiry. So can the bulls turn it around? Maybe they can. I mean, look, maybe they can, right? However, if the volume's down, the trend is down, we're underneath all major moving averages. And not only that, we've got momentum to cement this. Momentum's not going to govern us going back to the upside anytime soon. And I'll tell you the exact inflections on where I'll be wrong. The relative strength index will continue falling as long as Bitcoin's underneath $27,399. Fact number one. Fact number two, the MACD will continue falling as long as Bitcoin is underneath, which it is underneath, $27,771. So that means the moving average convergence divergence is falling and will continue to do so. Now, fact number three, the stochastic momentum will continue falling as long as Bitcoin is underneath, which guess what? She is. $27,912. That is your inflection. And that is the largest inflection. So I'd use that as the predicate, meaning as long as these stochastics are down, risk is to the downside underneath $27,911. Okay. It's so simple. Now let's look at this relationship between the white line and the yellow line. What's happened here? We've seen the white line cross the yellow line to the downside for the first time since July 2023. Now, what happened July 2023, guys and dolls? We had the all time high this year. It was the previous quarterly high and current yearly high. So the last time we saw this exact signature print, which printed on Tuesday, yesterday, the last time was in July and we was 31 G's and now we're worth 27 G's. So do you understand the efficacy of data and making data driven decisions, not just doing a scratch card or blowing on dice or getting crystal balls out? We measure this to great precision for a reason, because success leaves clues to know where you're going. You've got to know where you're coming from. Now, let's have a look at another iteration, because this is not no sample set overfitting the data with the narrative. We're going to give you many iterations on this and you're going to see for yourselves exactly what's good. So the last time after, well, the last time before July was in May. So let's have a look what happened in May. Oh, look, this whole saga, right? Was at 28 G's and went all the way down to 24. Hmm. That's a nice shave. Hmm. It's interesting, isn't it? So let's pull up another iteration. Let's go back into history. Um, if I'm just going to go random, right? I'm just going to stop. Let's stop around here. 
let's pick this one so this is where the white line crossed the yellow right this is what we're looking at specifically whenever the white line crosses down the yellow signal so here is april the 5th 2022 let's have a look at price action april the 5th 2022 okay april the 5th I mean, come on, you can't write this, guys and dolls. It was right here. Bitcoin's worth $46,000. And guess what happened to price action? I mean, look, this, I don't have to talk, right? At, at this point, I don't even have to talk. Bitcoin dropped over 10,000 multiple to the downside. Look, look, I mean, look, that's a huge move, dude. Um, respectfully, that was a 67% drop to the downside, which saw us decrease by $32,700 per Bitcoin. So, you know, anytime I see the white line cross the yellow line on our trend volume inflection indicator, I tend to respect it. Now, the idea is this then, okay? We do see momentum aggressively falling. We see trend in tandem and volume in tandem. Now, if we look at the real world, this is something I do want to bring to your attention as I bring this to a conclusion. We do see a lot of political onshore and offshore headwind, notably speaking, Russia, Ukraine, Gaza and Israel. Now, we've also got the IMF, which is the International Monetary Fund, who are meeting up you know, every day this week. Um, that started on Monday on the US bank holiday and the Canadian bank holiday and the Japanese bank holiday, which was on Monday. The IMF were linking up even on that bank holiday day. Now, as the rest of the week transpires, we've got Chinese consumer price index coming out, which is better known as CPI. We've also got the US CPI coming out later this week. And we've got the UK GDP, which is the gross domestic product. So ultimately, what does this allude to? Well, let me tell you another thing that's happening this week. We've got the ECB, which is the European Central Bank, and the Bank of England. So we've got Christine Lagarde as the figurehead for Europe and Andrew Bailey as the figurehead for the UK. And they're linking up in Morocco to discuss monetary policy. Um, so I believe the markets will be volatile this week based on every variable that we measure, both in fundamental analysis and technical analysis. I would say that risk is to the downside. Simple as that. So I'm going to leave it there. Um, I'm going to be back on tomorrow to discuss some more Razzle and Dazzle. In that episode tomorrow, I believe we're going to touch into moon cycles, um, particularly the lunar cycle, how that affects human behavior and market sentiment. Um, and yeah, I'm going to give you guys a lot of alpha tomorrow regarding that. So until then, each one teach one. God bless you. God bless your families. Do some exercise. Remember, it's not all about money. It's about health and love. But if you do not have custody of your time, you'll be working harder for longer for the same fiat tree barter. So with that said, I will see you on the next one. Be safe. God bless.